loving it. So we were at 48 and we climbed to 47. Mm, hello, good game. Welcome back everyone. And thank you so much for taking the time to help support the channel. Thumbs up right down below before we get started. Most appreciative. All right, you ghouls, goblins. Let's break down today's deck. We've got a Grixis reanimator. You know, you could argue that this is a Rakdos deck. You could also argue that it's a four color deck because it's all included in today's deck. Uh, what we want to be doing is bringing back Velamonka's Lorehold from the grave and then attacking, getting another recursion spell, bringing back Coma from the grave. And of course, you know, hopefully they both got lifelink as well throughout that process. And it's going to be hard for anyone to compete against that. If you're unfamiliar uh, as to the cards I'm referencing, don't worry. We'll break down the deck in today's video, go through the strategies, the synergies, you know, the list, everything you'll want uh, as a beginner to pilot the deck effectively and efficiently if you've not seen something like this before. You know, of course, we'll get into the gameplay footage as well, showing play lines and interactions from my day's journey with this deck. Um, and then this should give you a good idea whether or not the deck's right for you and your wild cards, right? So if you're looking for anything other than that, uh, it's going to be in the link tree link in the description below, or you can easily Google Hello Good Game link tree, whether it be a 500,000 gem giveaway, free cash press monthly tournaments, you know, the community discord, all that kind of stuff there, uh, Patreon, it's all in the link tree. So you get in on that and check it out. Uh, go for the snooksies, right? With that being said, we will wrap up the video with our final thoughts and deck review when we're done. So don't go anywhere and let's get into it. Sixty cards, best of one, Grixis Reanimator, four point six average mana, twenty six non creatures and ten creatures. We'd have twenty four land, so you know, nice balanced deck and the mana. And it's all over the place, right? We've got white, we've got blue, we've got black, we've got red, we've got green, and we've got uh, the multicolor in here. So, you know, it could be a five color deck if you want to call it that. It could also be a Grixis deck if you want to call it that. And it also could be a Rakdos deck if you want to call it that, because we only have a single blue source splashed that we're looking to cast. And of course, Coma and Bellamachus, which, you know, are the other two colors there that we're missing, we're not going to be utilizing those, right? We're not playing green, we're not playing white um, at all only from the grave so there's no green and white land here because again we're just playing it from the grave there is a mix of blue land in the deck because we'll be praying playing praying praying that we are able to play <laughs> uh prismari command right because it's uh, an integral part to the deck like i said it revolves around playing velamachus from your grave Belmachus is a 5-5 five, five for 7 mana, but again, the 7 mana doesn't matter when it's being played from your grave, with Flying, Vigilance, and Haste. Whenever Belmachus Lorehold attacks, look at the top 7 cards of your library. You may cast an instant or sorcery spell from uh, among them with mana value less than Belmachus's power without paying the mana cost, right? Uh, and of course, you'll put the rest of them on the bottom of your library in a random order. This is amazing. Uh, we start the build with casting discard right as an additional cost to cast a spell discard a card draw two cards within thrill of possibility right a two drop instant speed prismari command a three cmc at instant speed choose two two damage to any target target player draws two cards then discards two card target player creates a treasure token destroy target artifact so we really want to focus on the middle two here target player draws two cards then discards two cards and then target player creates a treasure token. This will fulfill the draw and discard. It also will allow us to ramp in uh, to some of those more expensive spells. Seize the Spoils is similar for three mana at sorcery speed. As an additional cost to cast the spell, discard a card. Draw two cards and create a treasure token, uh, which is really quite nice. We have a little bit of removal within the deck via Baleful Mastery for four mana at instant speed. Exile target creature or planeswalker. We can cast it for two as the student cost, but that also will allow our opponent to draw a card. Four copies of Draconic Intervention, Sorcery Speed for four, as an additional cost to cast a spell, exile at instant or sorcery from your graveyard. Intervention will deal X damage to each non-dragon creature where X is the exiled card's mana value. If a creature dealt damage this way would die this turn, exile it instead. Of course, you'll exile the intervention once cast or resolved. And now, you know, there's that recursion that we're talking about. Four copies of Unbreakable Bond for five at Sorcery Speed. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield with a lifelink counter on it. I love it and return upon the tide for five mana as well, sorcery speed or tell for four, so we can get a cost reduction on this as well. 
Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. If it's an elf, which it won't be, create two elf tokens, which we don't need to worry about, right? So, you know, just really grabbing Velimachus from the grave, attacking and trying to, you know, get another unbreakable bond, get another return upon the tide from the Velimachus draw. And then we're bringing back Coma, the Cosmos Serpent, a 6-6, six, six, can't be countered at the beginning of each upkeep, create a 3-3 three, three blue uh, serpent creature token named Coma's Coil. We can sacrifice another serpent to choose one. Tap target permanent, its activated abilities can't be activated for this turn. Coma gains indestructible until the end of turn, right? So that's really, really good for us as well. And then of course, two copies of Burning Rune Demon for six mana. It's a six, six with flying. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for exactly two cards not named Burning Rune Demon that have different names. If you do reveal those cards and the opponent chooses one of them, puts that card into your hand and the other in your graveyard, then shuffle, right? So, you know, that's good value in and itself. You could change it for a dream trawler, um, you know, anything you want. Uh, I just like the Burning Rune Demon because it can pull the removal if we need it. It can pull recursion if we need it. Um, you know, it can even pull some of our other creatures for us to discard later on. Uh, you know, the temples are here within the Malice and the Epiphany, pathways within the Bright Step and River Glide, uh, Clearwater, and then, you know, a little bit of basic land. If something gets destroyed and we have to search for a basic. Uh, a Grixis based, but really the blue is only here with the Prismari Command again, which makes it a heavy Rakdos build. But the Prismari Command is a very good card for the deck, in my opinion. The draw to discard to make a treasure is beautiful, and you'll see in today's video. So uh, that's the list. That's the strategy and synergy. You know, you survive with the intervention, with the mastery. You know, you even have command if you need. And then you're ramping into your um, recursion. And of course, you'll have discarded along that journey some of these bigger creatures, which is really, really cool. Um, so that being said, thank you so much for your time and attention. We'll get into today's gameplay footage now, which is really cool. We've got uh, some great matches for you. And of course, we'll wrap up with my final thoughts and deck review. Cheers. All righty, let's get after it. Uh, opponent goes first. Cheater. Uh, but I think we'll be okay. Maya's got a problem with this too. Right? Whenever we're not going first. Right, Maya? Cat's first. <laughs> so what we're doing right now is just scrying for discard. Right? We want some discard and draw to get uh, the Velomachus out of our hand. We also are looking for draconic uh, intervention, I guess. So we have the discard and draw. White. Mall of the Skyclaves on the life gain. Getting hit for 5. They're up to 24. Sorcerer Speed draw and discard. Lorehold goes first. Oh my gosh. You know, <laughs> there's games where we don't pull a single one and it's kind of frustrating. And then there's these ones where that's all we pull and that's almost as frustrating. Uh, playing this in the play queue, we have a 75% rate. You know, doing very well with it. But this is a, a hard deck to beat here. We really do want a top deck of Draconic Intervention. It will save us. Well, they do have protection, but still, uh, it would be it would be ideal. <laughs> so we can just go straight for the juice, I guess. Um, it's a little awkward here. We want to pull a draconic intervention with Velowakis on the attack. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. And we could... Uh, I believe just nuke everything. I mean, Daxos will die because when these others die, then Boshi drops as well, right? Um, so that's what I call clean and house. <laughs> and I think we'll get the win here now. That was such a good top deck. Uh, you can't take Velomachus, it's too expensive. Good game. Rank 48. He's seated here first. Velomachus. Doing the dirty, right? Discard it, play it. Um, what we really like to have is Unbreakable Bond in the grave. And then we get Coma out. 
with life gain. Oh, now that's really nice. But this is good enough, right? Demonstrate how the deck worked. What was that? A turn four win. Not too shabby. All right, round two. Fight! We can do it. We can do it. Is it a bad hand? I think so. There's no discard. We do have the return and the dragon to discard. But we're just hunting for that discard again. There's plenty of it here. There it is. We have blue, red, and black. Good to go. So this is our blue source. Uh, we'll draw to discard to make a treasure token. Oh my gosh, they're fooding out though. Food is scary. There's a lot of value in those breadcrumbs, you know what I mean? Whoa. Really folding their whole hand out. I guess we can just foretell this. Uh, it's cheaper that way, which is nice. We have Unbreakable Bond too for the life gain, uh, which is great. Bastion is okay. Another land is good news. They're down to one. I mean, they went really fast on us. We could destroy this artifact. Let's pass our turn. I don't know if we really should. I think we should just do our own thing. Right, take the damage. I'd rather ramp because we don't have that fourth land in hand. So I'd rather play Velamalkis next turn as a guarantee. What if they're holding removal? I would freak out if they're holding removal. So we double select ourselves. You know, Velamalkis goes, Coma goes. We get the treasure, we pull a land, and um, I guess the lifelink's not bad. We'll just cast this later for cheaper. Yeah. And now I guess the question is, do they have removal? No, because we get the attack, the trigger's gone through. <laughs> Should we just wipe their geese? And they they will exile. We could. I think that's a good decision. Caesar spoils isn't bad either. We'll keep the bond there. Uh, if they play anything bigger, we can get it later. And I'm just going to make some food. You know, that's fine. We clear them out from here. And I guess it's just the first one that goes, uh, or the last one, I should say. But they have no mana generation through the, them anymore, which is great. And, you know, at this point, we're just free casting, gaining life every turn. Let's do Seize the Spoils. Discarding Coma. Unbreakable Bond. That's great. And we're going to cast that. Four Coma. Hang. The fee. The duty. The tax. Right? That's the play line. That's, you know, how we want it to go. We've been destructible. We can also tap things that they control. I don't think it's relevant. I want to see that last card in their hand. The Troll King. I see. It's a good thing we can tap the heck out of it and just gain as much life as it does damage. Oh no, cancel. Because they would just replay it. 
Actually, it doesn't matter. Let's just take our turn. Because it doesn't cost mana, it's just a serpent. And then we're hitting for 9, 14 damage. They do have food, but no mana to grab it. And then if we get a Seize the Spoils, or not Seize the Spoils, um, the, the Command or whatever it is. And we exile it, but they do have the oven to sack it, so it just kind of forces that. One damage, one life through Bastion. Don't care. Oof, that's a lot of life. Let's spoil it up. We are discarding Belamachus. We draw a land, and um, I guess let's just sit on it. Deck is not only fun, but it's incredibly powerful. Like, how many decks can stand up to the food recursion? You know, it's, it's pretty gross sometimes. Well, I'll tell you who. It's Grixis Reanimation. Wee bit stronger. <laughs> Do we have a? I don't really want to nuke Coma though. We'll just tap their creatures and even have, you know, ultimate destruction. <laughs> just, uh, you know, there's no reach. You know what I mean? Oh, but they've got the damage. So we'll get the trigger. We take the command. Two damage. Uh, draw two, discard two. Two damage. Draw two, discard two. We could toss some lands, I guess. And then we can tap these permanents. Bingo, bango, bongo. Very groovy. So they deal a little damage here, gain some life. Uh, just the thing is, with Velomachus and Coma having lifelink, like, wolf, right? There is no limit to it. Loving it. So we were at 48, and we climbed to 47. Mm. Not uh, much, but it's an honest day's work, right? <laughs> Going first. I'm not in love with it. We do need to find a blue source of land for the Prismari Command. It's kind of like a rhyme, right? We'll see if we can get it, though. Yorion frightens me. Um, you know, typically, we do... A decent job against aggro decks, but there could be, you know, interruption, removal, a few things to make us upset. Oof, that's not it. That is not it at all. Yikes. So we can foretell our recursion spell, at least. We really need that command to start drawing, start discarding. Because I want this rune demon in grave as soon as possible raven's warning that's not good coma in hand oh we're so screwed we're just getting land screwed we didn't even draw land at all that turn ouch we can't win them all right sometimes it just happens and they get to see our whole hand oh maybe i should have just exiled it and they would have gotten the draw anyways Right, just in a different way, and then they wouldn't have seen our hand. And then we would have been down to mastery. But mastery is really like one of the few ways to deal um, you know, with the planeswalkers that they may have. Jezkai with the Tom in play. Okay, so this at least works to draw the land.
Let's toss it to the grave. Where is the land? I've scried for land. I mean, I guess we pushed one to the bottom, but it was the wrong land. It was another jag off land. <laughs> but, uh, you know, an island off the top, we're going to be okay. Wolf. So they still have two mana. There it is. Let's look for another, I guess. It's good, but I mean, we've already got the command. How important is exiling this thing? <laughs> Let's pass our turn. Just set our stop and hopefully we can interact with it uh, at some point there. They're not missing land drops, right? Because this is a dragon, we can't hit it with uh, Draconic Intervention, so we kind of do have to commit to giving them it through the Mastery, and I'd rather give them a draw and take my turn than have to spend my turn doing that next turn, right? We'll see how it pays off, though. Pass our turn. We have the command. I don't want to commit to, you know, return upon the tide yet because there's counter magic there. I bet you there's counter magic there. So we're just in for a long haul, right? This is going to be a long match. Maybe. We'll see. Maybe they just finish us off. I have that spell too. They know what's up, right? Draw two, discard two, create treasure. Rune Demon goes. We have so many recursion spells. What do they discard? Are they doing Velomachus too? I wonder. What are we in for here, ladies and gentlemen? This isn't a meta deck, so I'm excited. Land Glass Casket. We can take one damage. That's fine. I'm just worried about the unlimited amount of counter magic they have in hand. Pass our turn, I guess. Or do we just go for it? I think we just we wait a little longer, maybe. Maybe we shouldn't be waiting against these guys, but it's like I think that might be play. Rather than just walking into it one by one, like let's at least, you know, have a little recovery on the back end. They don't want to just like play four CMC, have them counter it. Oh, they do it again, eh? Frick off, Randy. There could be counter magic here. You know, that's and that's the kind of thing I want to do, right? Is I want to pull their counter magic out on stuff that's less important. Hey, 
and we know they've got counter magic up and they don't want to like use it is the thing right does it just go straight through we have to go for it Yeah, okay, so first spell dealt with. Right, and they're only gonna have so many of those. The dragon that they have is really kind of posing us. Typically, we just, you know, fillet the field. <laughs> Getting hit for four. The amount of resources they have is disturbing. 10 available mana. Right, they could have, uh, you know, Magma Opus. Right? Another Tome. Good for them. They can tap this for mana, too, with the Prismari Dragon. That's so sick. Alright, Counterspell 2. Right? And, you know, if we wanted to make this into a best of three deck when we come up against control decks, I think it's easy enough to put in counter magic. Like, we, we had, you know, the mana for it here, so. For now, we're just going to keep trying to push through and try to survive, but, you know, if they start casting all rounds of Epiphany, it's game. Right? So. We're on a pretty rough spot here. They could almost double cast all. <laughs> oh, they discontinuity us. They're tapping our lands. What's going on here? What you doing, Willis? It is Magma Bropus. We lose the mana when we go to our draw from our upkeep. One, two, three, four, five. We'd still have enough. Let's try it here. <laughs> We're getting all the cards, you know what I mean? I guess we maybe should have kept one of those to wipe this, but we're dead anyways, just with the dragon hitting us for three, so. Doesn't matter, brah. The only thing we can do is grab Velomachus with lifelink. Is there a third counter? Three side comings in a row. Hot dog. <laughs> you dirty dog. Oh my gosh, now that was hot, bro. That fountain is so hot right now. <laughs> good game. Let's show ourselves out. I love it. Um, you know, good match. Uh, getting close, but they just had every answer to stop us, right? Woof. All right, you guys. Final thoughts. How can we improve the deck? That's what I want to know right away. Leave your opinions in the comments below. Uh, I think potentially Massacre Worm could help us survive against some of those more annoying decks. But again, this is why we have Draconic Intervention. Uh, so as good as Massacre Worm is, we have it covered already. But these are the kind of ideas that I'm looking forward to hearing about. Uh, right? So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, deck review, it's new, it's unique, and it works pretty good and it's a lot of fun. So um, this is the exact kind of content I want to make. During my climb into, you know, the top 50 Mythic, which I used Model White for, check out that video. Um, you know, I found a couple decks very annoying and a couple decks very surprising. And this was the surprising one. Yesterday we played Model Black for us. That was the annoying one. This is the surprising one. And I know this is not the same deck. I totally butchered it. But we have the Recursion, we have Velomachus, and we have Coma. And that's what the core was built around. Uh, my opponent 
didn't have red, they were playing, um, you know, black and blue version, but I really like uh, the red or the Rakdos or the Grixis, and I think that through all the draw and discard, it makes it very consistent. So, you know, let me know what you guys think, of course. Thanks again for watching. Support the channel through all of the different facets via the link tree. And of course, have yourselves a magical day. We'll see you soon in the next.